Hi, this is Billy. This is an update to the video I made previously to set up Recallbox. I've updated the instruction for Recallbot 6.1.1. You can continue on with the rest of the video. That shows you how to set up the physical units and how to set it up for a previous version of Recallbox. Connect your Recallbox to your Ethernet cable and boot it up. Once you see it's starting, do the ssx root at recallbox.local command to connect it from your terminal. The password is recallbox root in lowercase. Then you type nano recallbox.conf to modify the configuration for the GPIO. So you use the control w command to search for the controllers.gpio. Once you find it, you change the dot enabled from 0 to 1. Then you go ahead to change the map command to the values shown on the screen. You can also find the values on the description of this video. Then you can press Ctrl X to exit, press Y to save the file, and then you can type reboot to restart your recall box. That's it. You can now use Recall Box on the game without any configuration. Check out the description on the video to see what buttons to use, which key represent which buttons. The hot key button is the select key button. Within a game, you press select, hold it, and press A together to reset the game, select and B together to go to the simulation console's menu, then you can make other selections according to the menu. In the call box, the B button is used to proceed to the next or enter. The A button is for going back. X and Y have other functions. Uh, start usually starts the game within the game simulator. Select is to select the option or insert the coins. First step is to download a copy of the latest 
2018 Christmas beta uh, because the GPIO button controller we are trying to use will not work with the previous version so we have to download this one so let's go in here and click this one it's a very special link then you come to something like this it's a Christmas beta and you go here to find your Raspberry Pi whether it's Pi 0 or Pi 3 we're using Pi 0 so let's click the Pi 0 link here this one okay, once you click that you can download to print the TF card we need to use the actual software Okay, you can download from here depending on the Windows or Mac you are using you can download the right version I'm using the Mac so uh, I will be downloading the Mac version once the etcher is downloaded uh, you can launch it and we can select the image I downloaded it to here then I select the drive uh, this is the 16 gig that I used and then we can start flashing and it will ask you for a password for your administrative access so you can let it finish usually take a l quite a few minutes five minutes at least Okay, now that we've got this record box software loaded, we are going to insert it at the back of this game console. So I find that it's easier to just put your middle finger inside and then push it in that way. It'll be easier. Make sure you plug it in firmly. And then for the first time to pull up, we have to uh, insert the LAN cable into this slot here. Okay, it's inserted. And then for the first time, you're not sure if your battery is fully charged, so you better hook up a USB power cable. Just plug it into this. Let's plug here. And this is the power on off button. So let's power it on. Then you'll notice there's a green LED for the Raspberry Pi. When it puts up, uh, the green LED will be blinking. If it doesn't blink, that means either you're running out of battery or the connection is wrong. Let's do some loud music. Let's see how it finished. is booting up, loading, for the first time it will take a bit longer okay. and this is the main menu at this point in time the buttons nothing are working because we haven't configured the GPIO pins so the next step we will need to uh, connect to the network uh, and the remote connect to this console to configure the put up files and parameters to make the GPIO works. Remote connect, we need to go to the terminal application in Mac or in the Windows, it could be the command prompts. Check whether the record box is connected. So we can do this command. If there's only one record box in your home network. This command will find it. So as you can see, it's uh, 1.2. And then next we can connect to it by ssh command ssh root at the call box dot local. Root is the ID we are trying to log in. Then we can put in the default password for the call box, which is 
the call box roots in lower case R E C A L B O X R O O T. There's only one L there. Okay, then we'll need to start modifying the recallbox.config file, which is this file. Uh, this is the VI editor. Uh, you press the forward slash to find something and then enter to stay there. And then once you find it, like this, enter, you stay there. And then you want to change anything, press A to turn it into insert mode. See the bottom of the screen has the insert light up. Now you can change the thing. So the thing we want to change is the custom pin mapping of the wave share game heads. And we'll copy this command from my notes. So once you finish your edit, press escape, turn it into read only mode, and then you can continue to edit uh, this enabled. You have to turn it to one. So enabled one, and then the argument is map equals four with your custom pin setting for your wave share game head. Next, we want to set up the Kodi. Let's search for Kodi. We want to enable it so we can watch some video on our game console. And then uh, we don't want it to start up in Kodi because we want to play games and only start the Kodi when we play some keys. Right? So when we press the X button, it will start Kodi. So let's enable that. Uh, make it 1. So Kodi X button equal 1. That means when you press the X button, it will start coding. Okay, the third thing we need to change is your Wi-Fi setting at home. So now we are connecting using the LAN cable. We want to make it more portable, so let's start the Wi-Fi and then enable it. So search for Wi-Fi, enter. So Wi-Fi enabled, change to 1 if it's not already 1. And then for the region, you have to Change it to your country code. For Hong Kong, I'm in is HK. For the SSID, change it to your home Wi-Fi SSID. Mine is Billy Wi-Fi. For the Wi-Fi key, change it to your home Wi-Fi's key. So I just tell you something. Okay, that's all you need to do. And then you can press colon X exclamation mark to save the file. Um, there is a bug in the way Recallbox handle the GPIO configuration, so we need to fix the bug by typing in some other commands. So to do that, we need to remount the root file system as read write by this command. And then we need to uh, edit the boot up shell script. Okay, now within it, you have to search for a few things. First, search for extra two. Okay, we find it. This is extra two. And then we press A to add a line. And then put in extra three equals dollar five. So we can store one more parameter from the GT GPIO custom pin setting. And press escape when you're finished. Then search for the next parameter, which is map echo. Okay, that's it. We have the default map equal one to two. So that means if you don't type in the map command, it will default to this one. But if you type in the map command, it's still not uh, getting the second set of parameters because you see here, the map only take in one parameter. We can't put in our customized GPIO pin. So what we need to do is press the A to add data extra free. Okay, once we did that, we'll have the map parameter map equal four that falls into extra 2 and then the GPIO echo or the custom pin number that falls into extra 3. So once we do that, uh, we can successfully configure the wave share head, the game buttons. So let's save it. Okay, now we can shut down by this command and reboot. Okay, it's reporting now.
to a starting. Okay, let's see whether the button works. Ah, you see, the up and down works. What about the start button? Ah, okay, it works. You can uh, show the uh, the menu. Too bright. Okay, and then you can see it's moving. And then what about the A and B button? Let's see. A button is working. Great. B button going back, going back. Now let's try to test if the Wi-Fi is working by unplugging the LAN cable. So unplugged, no more LAN cable. And then we'll uh, use the start button to bring up the menu. And then we move down to uh, the network setting. Press the A button, go in. So we can see that it's still connected. Still connected. And there's a new IP address for the Wi-Fi dot one three three. Okay, we can close it. Go back. And let's try to run the Kodi. Press X to bring up the Kodi menu. Kodi menu. And then uh, launch Kodi. Press A. Okay, so this is the Kodi menu. By default, we have uh, one add-on. So let's start the add-on. The add-on is called YouTube. So we can test with YouTube, see whether our Kodi video system is working. Okay, let's play the uh, popular right now. Go up this one. Clemson to me saved college football last night. And I'm not engaging in hyperbole by saying that. Because all we've been talking about is Alabama. We remember the 35 point South Carolina drop from Clemson. We remember right. how Syracuse gave skip. them a run for their money. Clemson made a choice Go back. And you can uh, stop it by pressing the A. Uh, pressing the start, actually. You can stop it. Start to play again. Select, allow you to quit. Press A to quit and go back to the gaming system. So this is why I like Record Box. Everything is so nice, easily configured, and it has the built-in video player. So good luck with your retro gaming.